What's up everyone? Today I'm going to take you on a tour of the homestead, show you everything I have going on in the garden, in my chicken area, my orchard, my blueberry patch, and I'm going to have some chores that I need to get done at each one of those stops, so I figured I'd bring you along with me. I'm going to be starting off in the garden today. Um, I have a lot of stuff growing here. We're getting towards the end of the growing season and I planted my fall garden. My brother and I just built a greenhouse and we have our coal frames on these two raised beds up front here, really focusing on extending our growing season. And we're gonna be implementing a lot of different strategies to hopefully get a few more weeks, maybe even months. These beds uh, with coal frames have carrots in them. These ones are a few weeks old and these ones just started to germinate. And this bed up front here is all romaine lettuce. Three quarters of it is actually getting to the point where it's baby romaine, probably getting close to being harvested. The rest I just planted, so they're just starting to germinate. These two beds, this is a radish bed. Those are almost ready to harvest. These are just starting to germinate. And this bed is arugula and romaine. In the very back of my garden, I have my trellis bed. There's cucumbers and squash in here. They didn't really climb up there this year. That's something I'm really gonna have to focus on next year. So besides those raised beds that I just talked about, uh, the rest of my producing area right now is tomatoes. I have two raised beds with romas in them and there's zucchinis on the ends, but there's two raised beds with romas. I have a bunch of individual beds here with romas in them and some with indeterminates that are staked with this log trellis. I have two different types of log trellises that I'm using. This one right here, which is like giant logs put into the ground and cattle panels attached to them. Those are working really well. And I also have these three Y sticks put into the ground that I'm running logs in between and tying a stick to them and then tying the tomato to the stick that goes down. And those seem to be working really well too. So I'm really glad that I have all this set up and I've pretty much built the infrastructure for my garden going forward. So next year for this area, I'm just, I really just have to have starts inside, transplant them outside, and then prune them and trellis them as they grow. As opposed to this year where I had to do all that, plus build all these garden area, fence everything, build greenhouses, meat chickens, blueberry patch, everything. Going forward, everything should be a lot smoother uh, when it comes to actually growing and harvesting and preserving all of this food. So in between all these tomatoes, there's this greenhouse that my brother and I, we built earlier this year, earlier in the spring, and we just expanded it um, this week. This is pretty much the perfect size, we think, going forward, because we can fit three really decent sized raised beds in here, and we should be able to get a lot of produce into our winter months with this thing. Also, this greenhouse is self-watering. It collects all the rainwater that falls on these panels, and it funnels it into a gutter system, and it, we have a tube tied to those gutters that put it back into the raised beds. But yeah, that was pretty much the first half of the garden area that I have fenced off, and I pretty much have all of it wood chipped. There's one area here that I'm actually gonna spread some chips on right now. I was waiting to do this area until we had this greenhouse expanded, so I knew where it would finally end up. So now that that's done, I'm gonna get the wood chips spread right here. Uh, so that's the chores I'm gonna be doing in my garden today. I'm gonna show you the rest of the garden and then I'll get to work on spreading these chips before I head over to the chickens. The second half of my garden here, there's a hugel coulter and two raised beds. And the hugel coulter, um, I built earlier this year just made a giant pile of sticks from the trees that we felled to clear space for this garden And we use the logs to build raised beds uh, the smaller logs to build trellises and a lot of other things and We didn't really have any real use for like the smaller sticks And we wanted to use every part of the trees that we had to cut down to create this place So this hugelkalter really allowed us to do that we made a huge pile of them, and my cousin came over with a tractor, piled the soil on top of it, and so we're gonna let this sit for a year. We put some sunflowers on top, and they are massive. Uh, a couple of them are falling over. I'm not sure if I can get a root structure through all of these sticks that are buried. But three out of the five are looking really strong, and two of them are starting to fall over a little bit, but these are mammoth sunflowers, so. I guess I'm not shocked, but it's pretty cool having these in the middle of the garden. And I'm really excited to actually get this thing planted next year, and if not next year, maybe the year after. So the rest of this half of the garden, besides the hugel coulter, I have two raised beds and a lot of grass that I'm constantly mowing still. I want to get everything in here chipped and eventually just expand this area more because I need to grow more food if I want to be completely self-sustaining. These two raised beds I have here are pretty cool. This one we made with uh, logs that split when we fell the tree. So we put the two halves of the log that split parallel to each other and put two logs in the middle. And then to stake the logs up, we put two giant Y sticks and then ran a trellis across from it, which we're using to trellis these tomatoes. 
Uh, pretty cool. I'm gonna put another stick down from the trellis here to get the, to let these beans run up them. But yeah, this bed's really cool. I really like the idea. And I also have uh, what we're calling our mega bed. So we call this our mega bed because it's like 30 plus feet long and it's four giant logs of trees, the bottom of the trees that were felled for this garden. We were gonna mill these up into boards and had some other ideas, but we were, we just uh, ended up putting them pretty much right where they fell. We just kind of spun them around, put them in line here and filled up this bed and it is 30 plus feet long and a third of it's planted and I'm gonna get this other two thirds planted very soon with carrots and I wanna see how far into the winter we can get carrots without a greenhouse or a cold frame or anything like that. All right, so I got the garden all taken care of. I spread the chips where I need to spread them. Uh, so now I'm gonna get into the chicken run. The chicken run's really coming together. I have my compost system set up. I also got my geese their own house. I bought a dog house off Facebook Marketplace for a good price and just threw some wood shavings in there. And it's been going really well. It saved me a lot of time every night instead of having to run these guys down. They just know that that's their house now and they can go sit in there for the night and it's a lot easier than running them down and putting them in the coop with the chickens and they don't poop as much in the coop so i don't have to clean it out as much so it's a win-win but yeah i have this compost system set up and it's going really well i'm getting all the local grocery store food waste and i'm piling it in here two to three times a week and the chickens go through it the geese go through it and pick out what they want and then the rest turns into compost and i flip it over into my next pile here and so far it's all working really well saving a lot of money on feed and they're getting really high quality food and they're turning it into high quality compost that I'm going to be spreading on my trees and in my garden next year. I also have my cattle panel greenhouse. My brother and I built this a little bit over a month ago and our plan for this is to once it starts cooling off a little bit we're going to pile a bunch of leaves in here and if I'm still getting uh, that food waste from the local grocery store I'm going to throw that in here as well and just completely fill it with leaves and food scraps and let my chickens and geese go through this when it starts cooling off. But I'm really excited to really put this thing into action. Hopefully this can keep my chickens warm during the winter and give them a place to go and hang out and stay warm and get some more food. But while I'm down here, I'm gonna frame out these nesting boxes in my coop. We framed out this area when we built this coop. I'm gonna put some walls in here to make three separate spaces for them to nest in. Hopefully that's enough for all of them. They should start laying pretty soon, so I wanna be prepared and I want them to get used to laying in there when it's time for them to start giving me some eggs. All right, the nesting boxes are good to go. I use the tops of the cedar pickets that we cut to make our raised beds for our greenhouses. We have a bunch of the ends laying around and they were pretty much the perfect size to make those nesting boxes. So I'm gonna move on into our orchard now and I'll show you around. So the first thing you'll probably notice about this orchard is that there is a bunch of chicks running around. My brother and I built this cattle panel coop for them and we put it in the middle of our orchard here and I moved the chicks from our brooder out into this coop when we got it done and they've been out here for about a week or two now and it's all going really well. What I do is I come out in the morning, I give them some food and uh, fill up their water and then I open their door and let them free range in our orchard. Uh, the orchard's fenced off so it kind of keeps the bigger chickens out of here, which is good because the bigger chickens will get in here and eat their food and kind of bully them a little bit. But they still kind of get to know each other through the fence and they can kind of hang out that way so. It's a really good situation right now. I have 11 chicks in here and they're free ranging, digging up some food, fertilizing the soil. And yeah, it's all going really well in here. So as far as fruit and all these fruit trees are going, everything's looking good. I have a lot of trees that are putting on apples and those are getting really close. I'm actually taking some off tomorrow and based on how those are looking, uh, maybe even more, but the apple harvest is getting really close and I'm also getting grapes off of our grapevine here. I just took our first clusters of grapes off of this grapevine for the first time ever and the grapes were phenomenal, a lot better than I even imagined fresh grapes to taste. So I'm extremely happy. Um, 
It looks like they're getting even more ripe now. So I'm gonna be getting out here in the next day or so, and I'm gonna be taking a bunch of apples off of here and a lot of these grapes off of these grape vines. Got a lot of raspberries, and they were producing really well uh, until our neighbor's dog came in and chased our chickens through and kind of forced them all into the raspberry patch and they just ran in after them and kind of tore it all up. So that kind of put a damper on the raspberry production, but Overall, a good year for raspberries. The next thing I'm doing with this raspberry patch is I'm getting in here and cleaning up the ones that fruited this year. Uh, really getting this patch thinned out and getting a trellis on both sides so I can lean them up over and kind of organize this area better because it was just a real pain to harvest a lot of the berries this year. So next year, I want to have everything cleaned up so I can harvest easier and hopefully it'll be a better yield and the fruit will be healthier and it's just overall a lot better situation than just this mess I have growing on top of each other right now. But yeah, I kind of got in here earlier and I made individual beds for a lot of the trees and blueberry bushes in here. And I spread a lot of wood chips so the grass doesn't overtake them. And it's working out pretty well for a lot of these because this grass grows really thick back here in the corner especially. But with these logs and wood chips around a lot of these trees, gives them a good border and they just seem to be doing a lot better and not being overtaken by grass constantly. So next to the grapes is our hoop house. There's peppers, tomatoes, and a couple eggplants in the back. Everything's doing really well. I'm getting a lot of peppers out of here. Tomatoes are a little bit behind, but they're getting there. And the eggplants I'm gonna be harvesting tomorrow. But that's really cool. I've never had an eggplant. I've especially never grown one. So I'm excited to get in there and get it out and go get it cooked up. But yeah, this hoop house is doing really well this year and I'm getting a lot of peppers and I should be getting the highest yields coming up here in the next couple weeks. Next to our hoop house is my potato patch. This is a mound of soil that was here from the raised beds that used to be here. We moved down to our garden area, but the soil was left over, so I mounded it up and planted the potatoes in here, and I just started harvesting. I got about a third of this bed done, and I got a lot of potatoes. Um, it's lasted me about a week, and I've been eating them every night, and I've hardly made a dent in all the ones I pulled out of here. So yeah, a lot of potatoes left in there. I've gotten a lot out already, so I'm getting a lot of food out of this food forest here, and it's kind of on the home stretch. So that's it for the food forest. A lot going on in here, a lot of food coming out of here very shortly. So I'm gonna move over to the blueberry patch and move the meat birds onto a different paddock. All right, I'm in my blueberry patch now. I have about 70 blueberries planted in here. It's the first year I put this fence up and planted all these earlier this spring. And I'm also running my meat birds through here. I've been moving my meat birds through my blueberry patch to help me control the grass that's in here. I. I have a 100 foot fence and I've kind of created sections for them and been moving them throughout my blueberry patch to help dig up all the grass, fertilize the soil, and then I plan on putting wood chips in behind them. It took a long time to spread wood chips in the one section that I have done. You can see I have a tarp in the middle still, but um, I at least have a few of the bushes covered and there's a couple more sections that they've uh, destroyed all the grass in. I just moved them today and there's like one more section after this, this one I just moved them into of grass that's left. So hopefully I'll have all this grass kind of beaten down once they're done with this area and all this soil will be fertilized and I'll get some chips spread on here later this year, probably in the fall sometime. And my plan is for this area to be completely covered with wood chips and for all these blueberries to kind of just take care of themselves and have a good fertile environment for them to grow in. So the plan is to put them in here, let them dig this up for a week or two, and then move them on to the last spot of my blueberry patch that has really thick grass on it and just let them work on that. I've lost a couple of these guys due to aerial predators. I believe I put a trail came out here and nothing's happened since. So maybe a raccoon got in here somehow. Uh, maybe it's hawks, owls, I'm not exactly sure, but I've lost a couple of them. And my brother and I were just talking about everything and we don't think we're gonna do meat birds anymore. At least that's the plan right now. We'll see what happens. Things are always subject subject to change around here. And I'll be doing a complete video on this uh, at a different time. But yeah, with this feed prices the way they are, we're thinking it's a better use of our fence and uh, lawn and pasture area just to put some sheep in here and just let them rotationally graze around our yard and not have to buy them as much feed. Because I want the feed store constantly with these birds. I like lamb more than chicken. So hopefully with the lambs we get next year and the deer I'm putting in the freezer during hunting season, hopefully that'll cover our meat need for the entire year. But yeah, everything's looking really good in the blueberry patch. This was a lot of work to get it set up this year. It's gonna be a lot more work to get this completely covered in wood chips. I'm not even sure we have enough right now. I'm gonna have to get a couple more loads probably from our tree company that's in the area 
But once this area is covered with wood chips, the idea is this will pretty much just be a food production area with very minimal labor and effort on my end, which is perfect. So I'm trying to set up long-term systems that hopefully take care of themselves as much as possible. So I can just come through here and, you know, give them some maintenance when needed and then harvest all the berries off of these bushes.